All right, next up we have um, Sven and Gannett. And uh, Gannett has been watching, what, Supergirl and The Flash? Yeah, but my daughter is forcing me in my defense. Forcing <laughs> you, sure, right. Sure, yeah. And we have another Game of Thrones person here. That's yeah. good. So we're going to hear a little bit about Jump uh, with the DOE. Yeah, I, I need to uh, raise this. Can you help me pull up? Okay. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so Sven, uh, Sven um, I'm, I started uh, with, the, uh, with RP, the Advanced Research Projects Agency for Energy, um, as a technical market advisor. Uh, earlier this year, I've been with um, BTO, uh, so the Building Technologies Office, uh, specifically the uh, Emerging Technologies program uh, where I got involved with uh, Jump. Uh, so I'm really uh, 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 glad to be here. And um, uh, just the uh, presentation so far has been so, like, excellent. Uh, exceeded my uh, expectations. Um, and I, there are a lot of great lessons learned. And I'm wondering if uh, um, that could be actually like compiled, like uh, global uh, lessons learned. Um, yeah. That, that would be awesome. Yeah, all over IDScale.com slash resources, guys. So, uh, yeah, so, so I'll, I'll uh, be uh, tag teaming with uh, Gannett. Um, uh, I'll, I'll uh, uh, articulate uh, sort of our motivation uh, uh, behind Jump um, and talk a little bit about uh, um, the uh, launch of Jump um, and Gannett is going to uh, continue uh, with, with uh, more detail on some of the uh, campaigns or challenges that we uh, ran, uh, as well as uh, lessons learned um, and a glimpse of uh, things to come. So, um, Wolfen BTO uh, is it's, um, residential and commercial buildings actually uh, account for 40% of uh, energy. Um, uh, energy uh, usage uh, as well as emissions. Uh, it's it's the biggest uh, sector. So I don't know if how many uh, actually uh, knew about that, but it's it's a huge huge uh, um, just uh, energy hog. Um, so BTO is looking for energy efficiency uh, to to meet um, uh, climate goals and, and er energy savings goals. Um, Merging Technologies uh, is the uh, research arm of uh, R&D arm of uh, BTO, Buildings Technology Office uh, within DOE, um, where we are looking at accelerating uh, sort of cutting edge, innovative, uh, emerging um, uh, energy efficiency technologies um, and um, with, with the goal of, uh, really ambitious goal of uh, by 2030, reducing the energy use uh, intensity uh, in buildings by 45%, and by 2020, actually reducing it uh, by, by uh, 30%. Um, so historically, uh, that was done through uh, lab-directed R&D. Um, more recently, it's been some uh, competitively uh, um, uh, funded um, opportunities, uh, so FOAs, um, competitive solicitations. Um, but we realize um, that um, we, we have these great researchers, uh, staff scientists um, at, at the national labs, uh, and we're really proud of them, uh, but there's, there's more to innovation than, than, than uh, especially reaching those ambitious goals, and we'll probably have to be even more ambitious to, to, to uh, combat uh, climate change. Uh, we, we need to look at uh, different platforms and, and different approaches as well. Uh, so uh, uh, Emerging Technologies uh, looks at a variety of different um, uh, program areas. Um, so uh, HVAC, water heating, appliances, uh, windows and, and building envelopes, uh, so like insulation, air sealing, uh, and whatnot. Uh, lighting, so solid state lighting, um, LEDs, OLEDs, um, uh, building energy modeling and analytics, uh, sensors and controls, and, and grid related, uh, building to grid related uh, efforts. Um, and so the uh, jump um, uh, um, 
program, which we'll get again into more detail, uh, really focuses on a lot of these uh, programming areas. Uh, so I, I like this quote. Um, how many have? So uh, innovation is really people creating value uh, through the implement, uh, implementation of new ideas. Um, how many of you have heard of that quote? I assume quite a few. No? Okay. Um, and it, the, the, uh, it, it really centers around uh, people, um, values, sort of economic benefit um, uh, of, of, of uh, implementing uh, of ideas, uh, new ideas. Um, and being an engineer, um, I, I, I came across this um, online and uh, just uh, liked it a lot, uh, putting it into an equation. Um, so innovation equals, uh, so again, the economic benefit equals uh, ideation times uh, implementation. So uh, ideation meaning the innovators, um, implementation meaning the, the uh, executors uh, or implementers, um, and having that bridging role uh, of bridging from innovators to executors, because not all innovators are executors and not all, uh, all executors are innovators. Uh, so uh, bridge, bridging that um, uh, to, to, uh, to, to uh, actually uh, get the value and, and impact um, and the only way to, for technologies to have impact is, uh, is for them to make it to the market and mass adoption widely adopted um, and uh, the market being the final arbiter uh, of, of success. Um, so so um, uh, what we're interested in is uh, looking at ways to uh, maximize uh, innovation and, and value creation um, uh, getting more innovators um, and uh, focused on energy efficiency. Um, so, so increasing that, um, uh, also having a, a uh, implementation route uh, for, for new ideas and, and uh, the uh, Bridger role uh, I see as, as our uh, national labs uh, doing a, uh, a really uh, valuable um, uh, role in, in being in being a, a bridge right between you two. Um, so so this brings me to uh, cr crowdsourcing. Uh, and uh, a couple years, uh, I guess uh, last year, um, uh, Dr. Dan Danielson, who was the uh, former head of uh, EERE, um, uh, Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy, uh, part of the Department of Energy, uh, basically saying that um, uh, it's, it's, it's not just the uh, professional scientists uh, uh, coming up with new ideas. It is really anyone can con contribute. Um, and, and, and that really brings, brings us uh, to, uh, I guess, uh, our hypothesis that uh, uh, energy efficiency uh, can be tackled by a variety of, uh, of different, different actors. Um, um, in addition, uh, this, this was a, uh, an analysis done that I, I saw uh, online of uh, sort of uh, generalist uh, crowdsourcing uh, platforms, in, including Innocentive. Um, I don't know how accurate it is, but um, uh, it, the interesting part is that uh, for <coughs> clean tech, uh, it only represents a sliver of 2%. Uh, of, of, of challenges um, uh, launched um, over, over the years. Um, so so we, we saw a gap, um, and, and uh, that brought us to, to uh, um, looking at launching our own crowdsourcing um, program called Jump. Jump. Um, <laughs> yes. Jump. <laughs> <laughs> So, so uh, JUMP stands for uh, Join the Discussion, Unveil Innovation, uh, Motivate Transformation, um, Promote Tech to Market. So Tech to Market um, actually started uh, within RPE, um, and I was, or still am technically, a uh, Tech to Market advisor at uh, RPE. So looking at advancing technologies towards the market and, and looking at ways of, 
accelerating uh, that and um, that process and, and making it more likely that uh, technologies will hit the market. Um, and uh, so in, in, in WoofJump, uh, we uh, are uh, designed to gauge uh, industry partners uh, on really uh, meaningful challenges uh, and, and um, uh, to develop uh, campaigns um, uh, relevant to the most pressing uh, energy uh, challenges um, that um, um, are relevant to the industry partners uh, as well as uh, BTO. Um, and to, uh, again, facilitate uh, that connection between uh, industry um, and the labs, um, uh, as well as uh, 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 creating a uh, community, um, uh, expanding the uh, community of, of, of innovators um, and really uh, soliciting uh, new ideas and new, new, new participants uh, to the uh, conversation. Um, so uh, w w when I mentioned uh, earlier that uh, National Labs, uh, uh, so, so uh, JUMP was launched, um, it was actually a pre, uh, pre um, a JUMP version was launched by uh, Oak Ridge um, and uh, it was uh, pitched uh, internally to, to BTO. Uh, we liked the idea, so we expanded it to actually uh, five, uh, five national labs, including uh, uh, LBML, just up the road, um, uh, NRL, uh, um, uh, Argon, um, uh, PNNL. Um, and uh, so, um, the, uh, the, uh, so, so why would an industry partner come to us? Um, so, Obviously, they, many many uh, industry partners or uh, industry participants are are um, have their own challenges, um, and they uh, often mesh well with with our goals of uh, creating more energy efficient uh, technologies, um, and they don't necessarily have a mechanism to uh, to. Um, uh, launch their own uh, campaigns. Um, and even if they did, uh, just evaluating all of the ideas, um, uh, uh, they, 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 it was a daunting task uh, for, for them. Um, so in, in, in this case, uh, they, they looked at uh, a national uh, lab partner as, as sort of a third party validator uh, of those ideas. Um, um, and uh, also looking at uh, uh, some of the uh, resources that we're providing to the table that Gannett is going to talk a little bit more uh, about um, in terms of helping the ideas um, be implemented, uh, so either having the industry partner uh, pull them along, um, or in other cases, providing uh, technical uh, services uh, and kind of technical support uh, beyond, uh, uh, and I didn't mention this, uh, the industry partner provided the uh, prize, uh, a modest uh, cash prize um, to, to the uh, challenge. Uh, so, so the way uh, Jump Jump works um, is again uh, creating a uh, call for innovation or a campaign. Um, we, we shied away from using the word campaign because in government campaign means quite, quite a bit. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, really, I didn't, uh, working closely with the national lab and the uh, industry partner on um, uh, creating a uh, problem statement that uh, really met their their need, uh, as well as ensuring that uh, it it um, if successful uh, would um, amount to a meaningful. Uh, energy savings potential. Um, so jointly uh, creating that, uh, that challenge uh, statement, uh, launching the uh, uh, call for innovation. Um, uh, participants uh, would uh, submit ideas. 
and we open it up to, to all U.S. Uh, um, citizens. Um, uh, and uh, so uh, very wide uh, net, uh, so not, not just uh, scientists and engineers, but like just across the board, um, uh, creating a, um, uh, having, creating a uh, community um, around uh, the, uh, the uh, ideas and, and providing uh, input to the ideas, voting, um, and uh, creating a, a discussion and awareness of, of the, uh, uh, the problems and, and uh, sort of the uh, um, greater uh, goals um, that uh, BTO has uh, set. Um, then uh, convening a um, expert of um, judges um, uh, comprised of uh, uh, national uh, lab uh, experts as well as uh, industry uh, experts. Um, and then um, uh, announcing a, a winner, but then uh, really looking at um, uh, ways to, um, I guess, take the idea further um, and, and, and what that entails. So can I? So my turn. Okay. Do you mind the checker? Thank you. So um, it's been a fun, and first of all, thank you, Matt, for everything you have been doing for the last yeah. year and a half for supporting us. Um, he has been a great impressive bonus, if possible, we will share later. Um, but it's just, we always need something and we need it in the next minute. And he's been super supportive. So thank you, Matt. Uh, you have made us look good in front of DOE over and over again. Thank you. Um, so it's been an interesting journey, right? We learned a couple of interesting lessons on the go. One, uh, Sven was talking earlier about the first pilot. We did it before we even called the jump. We didn't have an industry partner then. It was really us, or Oak Ridge National Lab, we identified an idea, and then we introduced it to a couple of people, to like a couple of people, we tried to support funding, but that was about it. And the big, like then we realized, so what do we do to move this idea forward? We don't really know. So the next round we realized that we need to have industry partners, because like Sven would say, the industry partner would give us this pull factor. They are making sure that these problem statements are coming from the industry, it's relevant to them. And we also wanted to make sure that the industry partner have a stake in the game. So we asked each of them to provide a cash award. We were successful in most cases. It wasn't significant, it was maybe three to $5,000, but it just showed commitment. And it was really, for them, just getting it through the approval through their corporate um, was even harder than the amount of the cash itself. So it's been an interesting journey and coordination through five national lab when everyone thinks that they are doing it the right way. This is, was really a success there. So we had 12 industry partners, 13 calls for innovation, launched throughout the last year. So it's, the entire duration was a year. Um, we had some calls that were open for seven weeks. We had some calls that were open for nine months. And I wasn't involved in that call. Um, <laughs> but I wouldn't do it this way. But I, I agree. But from looking at all the different calls, it seems like three months has been the optimum for us. Because beyond that, you really reached all the those that you could reach. You are done with your target audience, except if your name was outreach, that's a different scenario. Um, so we had 10 winning ideas, and overall, we had like maybe 1,400 users in the community. They go in, they vote, they comment. And it's been, and we have, um, so Michael inspired us with the whole Jamathons, but we obviously have to be creative with calling it, so we name it Jumpathon. So we go in and we jump. But the idea is a three hour event where people come in, learn about what jump is, and then we spend the majority of the time brainstorming on solutions for that specific technical problem. Um, definitely a fun journey. And so one other kind of unique advantage of jump, DOE does not have an issue in getting in touch with the General Electric, the big player. But reaching to um, the Joe Smith working out of his garage is not necessarily something that DOE has been good at. So the fact is, what we have been learning is that 50% of our membership as of today is less than 20 people. Small businesses, individual, and small companies. So this was a great indication that we are on the right track in terms of our outreach avenues, and we are reaching to the right group of people that we want to reach out to them. So I want to introduce you to a couple of people. I want to introduce you to specifically three. Remember I told you we have 10 winning ideas? I want to introduce you to three. This guy's name is Benjamin Knopf, and I think um, one of the folks for, that were presenting earlier, he's the one that when you speak to him, 
and you tell him like you are becoming a woman, and he's like, my wife is not going to believe it. I have had ideas all my life in election, and I'm going to know what to do with it. And I've been waiting for a job. And you feel like, ah, oh, my last year has been worthwhile, right? <laughs> Benjamin has been spending his nights and weekends, if you talk to him, like, I've been spending all my nights and weekends developing this prototype. He's full of energy. His background is residential energy efficiency. The challenge is water heating, water heating development um, using phase change material. So it's really, like, what's, what we've been learning there is that people have relevant background, but not the exact background. So Benjamin doesn't know water heating. He, he has a very cool design, he has a very cool idea, but doesn't know what it is. So um, he was maybe announced in March or so, and over the last seven months, we have been having monthly calls with Benjamin, and with our partner, A.O. Smith, and with our, and our, um, our own technical exper expert at o and Edge. And the point is, he has an idea on a paper, and I was impressed in the HP presentation in the morning that you can develop a prototype in 12 weeks. It takes us much longer, but part of it is we are developing a water heater, right? It, if we tell them in 12 weeks, it's just not gonna happen. Um, Aosmis is sending the water heater, Aosmis sent the $5,000 cash award, or, or, or an end, uh, using funds from ZOE, is putting in in-kind contributions, sending material, and we are kind of pushing this technology forward in developing the prototype. So we are continuing to have this really interesting discussion with Benjamin, moving into the market. And I'll talk. Charles is another interesting idea. Here, National Renewable Energy Lab was the sponsor for the call. They work with a company called Clear Result. And it was a super broad uh, call as well. Use your phone to interact better with your home, right? <laughs> super broad. But it was designed to be that broad, similar to what HP developed, right? And they came up with a cool innovation. They wanted students to use um, uh, um, the infrared attachment on their phone to take pictures. And using these pictures, the accumulated knowledge used to identify energy saving opportunities. They got a $3,000 cash award and now are being mentored to move the technology forward. And Scott is, is, an interesting, is another interesting idea as well. So here, instead of actually partnering with an industry partner, we are partnering with um, an office at the Department of Energy. So the Federal Energy Management Program wanted to identify underutilized energy efficient technology that are ready, but not necessarily commercialized, so that ORNL would come in, validate the technology, and promote it. You, now that we have third party validation for the performance, you can really promote it. We are having really good discussion with them. It's a question of, do we collect the data last summer, next summer? But if you notice, like we have these really cool ideas now, we have the industry partner that wants to push the idea forward, but each of these is super different and at a very different state. To simplify the thinking for us, we're thinking of it in terms of market readiness and technology readiness. And depending on each of these where they are, they have different needs. They need help with developing the technology. They need, they need help with kind of just pushing them toward the market. And we are trying to develop a customized approach that would work for each of them. Um, but we, we, over and over again, we are realizing that partnerships are key, and we don't have all the skills that we, that we need. So good partnerships have been great. Um, so just really quickly, how are we doing on time? You are doing great. Awesome. Um, so in terms of what we have been doing with community engagement, we think of it as three stages. First is peak interest. Second is get, keep them engaged. And the third is, huh? get them engaged, and the third is keep them engaged, right? Because they come, but then how do you make sure that they come again rather than they leave? So to pique their interest, we did blogs and newsletters and social media, and we asked for favors and favors from like our friend and their friends, right? Um, and then to get them engaged, we come from the heavy webinar culture, so we did webinars, and we recorded the webinars, and we made sure that it's on the call. We did in-person jump -a -thon. And we really focused on our website. We wanted to make sure that it's transparent so they know they won when they were thinking about submitting. They knew who the judges were. They knew the timeline when the ideas would be announced. Um, we also did, so one, and I'm talking about it later as well. One issue that we felt is that we kept hearing like, 
I'm not comfortable submitting my idea in public. Regardless, I'm not comfortable. We still wanted to engage that group of people, and Matt worked uh, really well with us then. So we created a public and a sister private campaign page. Wow. So if you want to submit, we encourage people to submit your idea in public. But if you're going to leave, we don't want you to leave. We want you to come back and just submit your idea in private. So it was a good kind of accommodating folks. And at least two out of our 10 winners submitted their idea in private. Mm -hmm. um, we had one person on my team. I'm just hoping he, was, he would be watching. His name is Tyler. And he's a younger gentleman. But like he is sitting on email. When people submit an email, the key is we need to respond back within 24 hours. We felt it was crucial that we show that we are responsive and we are responding to people's questions or concerns. Um, we had newsletter. You have this, like I think we have a community of about 2,000 people, so email them all you want, right? And then you get uh, people ask you for favors. Could you promote my information? But what we have realized is that when we actually have less information in the newsletter, our open rate is higher. I don't know, it, it, for us it was like, duh. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but that, when you have like a longer newsletter with so much more options, so many more clicks, people were lost. I'm not sure which one to click. And when we had that versus a B scenario, just one message, one link, the open rate was three times as high. So we started keeping it super focused, just one message, one link. Um, and we were just, we were transparent with score results, uh, who's the winner, and we tried to keep it super timely. And we were lucky that last year we had about 13 different calls going on, so the probability is you were interested in one of these topics and one of your friends was interested. So it, it kept it going and it was pretty lively throughout. Lessons learned, we would run out of favors. <laughs> Right? You keep asking, but then at some point, you run out of favors. So what we wanted to do is that our, on our homepage, we want to simplify the barrier for joining. Um, I think we had an application that was like five questions before they join. Now they can just subscribe for updates, and it's a one-click link. We wanted them to come. We wanted to capture them into the community. Um, we felt it was important to feature success stories because it made it real. Instead of being, it's a story, it's actually real. I can relate to Benjamin. Um, so remember I told you that we tried from our industry partners to put in a cash award? But there were some cases that we had deadline, and UE is very strict with their deadline, blame Ben. Um, some, we had specifically three calls that we did not have a cash award for them. Uh, for these three calls, two, we did not identify a winner. And the third, the winner is an awesome guy, um, but he has communica some communication. It, in general, the quality of the submission was super, super affected by the fact that there was not a cash award. There was not a hook there. So going forward, if an industry partner cannot provide a cash award, we will simply not work with them. Clear cut. Um, so the, we're getting innovators engaged. We had plenty of people that came to the website. But to keep them there or have them to click on the subscribe for update, that was another level of complication. So we are working really hard on studying the website. Um, to make sure that we understand where people go, where do they click, and what do they love versus no. Who did a jumpathon or a jamathon or a hackathon? Did some people do it in the room? Michael, one? Just one? No. Two, three? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two? No more? No? Okay. So we, in our mind, it was clear that a jumpathon was a three hour event, just like Michael said, it's like the book, right? <laughs> but then when you start and like try and do it in new places, you get pushed back. And people tell you, but I don't know if someone would be willing to come and sit for the entire three hours. So now we have, this is cool, I think, mini jumpathons and jumpathon on the go. The next step, I don't know what, what we, but so the idea is that we try to keep it really flexible to adjust with how, what else is happening. So the mini jumpathons is like a 45 minute event. But the idea is that you touch these people, you get them engaged in the discussion, and they can always leave and have the call for action and submit the idea later. The jump is on the go is like a reception style. So they pass through different stations, they come in at the beginning, they learn about jump is, they move to the next station where they start brainstorming on what is the call, and then they can end um, with submitting, the, submitting their idea or finishing it at home. But we, were, we really try to be flexible to make sure we take into account what else is happening in that event. I think someone said it earlier in the morning that when things are going so fast, you're like, oops, and I didn't send a newsletter this month, so let's send it tomorrow, and, and, and. Um, so for next year, we have like 
person on the team that is doing a beautiful communication plan, just like your wedding planner with different color, co colors. And it's really well planned, like early from the beginning, focus super on the quality we know, and we're on top of our game rather than being proact uh, reactive. And I think I mentioned about the optimum duration. Definitely not a year. Definitely not a year, huh? Uh, resistance to open innovation, even internally. Like, you have, when people, I think Sven, you mentioned earlier, when people have been doing research for their entire life, it's hard to tell them, but I think I know someone that has a better idea, but he's from outside this industry, so he really doesn't know how things work, but he has a really cool idea. Just believe me, believe me. Uh, it doesn't really work that well. But the good news is we had leadership support. So jump was gone. So at least we had a, a good chance of a pilot, of a go. And we didn't go do so badly, so that was good. So specifically, like there is a, um, some people that were really, really reluctant at the beginning, they came around and said, we were happily impressed with the quality of the ideas. <laughs> so there is progress there. Um, and yeah, they just need, simply we needed to give them a chance to see what the quality of the ideas will be. Um, and have them experience how an idea really can come from outside the, the, the industry. Because most of our winners are from outside that specific industry. They have a really cool idea, but they need the technical person at the lab who understand water heater, who understand refrigerator, to make the match. So that we have something that can move forward. Um, we talked about the private submission, and we talked in the morning about IP. Like if we do a webinar, half of our questions are around IP. Um, and usually our response is, they get to keep the IP, except if oh, the industry partner or the technical expert at the lab helps them develop another kind of IP, and at that point we will do um, other paperwork and other partnerships. Um, and I have two more slides. You're good. You're cool. Um, so in terms of moderating, jumping, and moving the idea forward, and I want to go back to like my colleague Tyler, who's been doing the moderating. He's not technical. Um, but because it's a DOE sponsored, we felt it was important that we review every idea and approve it or reject it. So as long as it's not sales, because we got a lot of sales um, ideas, just random sales ideas that we wouldn't approve and if it made absolutely no sense, like incomplete sentence that we didn't approve it. But other than that, we usually would approve it. Um, doesn't need to be technically super solid, we would approve it and again, we would rely on the community to upvote it or downvote it. Um, if it's a technically, strong, but just it, not valid, then we have uh, an other form um, that we just put it there. And I think initially we called it recycle bin, uh, but then we realized that people didn't really like the idea of going to recycle bin. I'm not sure why, so we changed it. Um, we had some, if we have the resources, then, and, and some calls were better than other, where the technical team is like super engaged, they are on the website all day, they respond, add com comments, and very engaged. So in these cases it was awesome, but unfortunately, given everyone's busy schedule, that was not a luxury we had um, in every situation. With judging, we didn't use much of IDSK judging platform, but I think we should look into that. But we really had our own Excel sheet, five criteria, it's a weighted average, um, and that was what we used to actually come up with a short list of finalists, and then they had a call, the technical judges at least they had a call and they went through that short list and deliberated to decide on the best. Tech to market, I, th I think we talked about that. We do a lot of the coordination between the winner, the technical um, industry player, and the lab. What we are going to do forward, in terms of, ex because I think in dif different to what some of the other people talked about in the morning, we have this industry player and third party that the role is significant, but clarifying the expectation at the beginning in terms of what is the role, what, what we will be doing things is crucial. Um, and we talked about that. Yeah, another thing that we learned is that we assume that if someone submits the idea, then they want to take it forward all the way to the market. Nope. Nope. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, can you give me money for it? <laughs> Uh, yeah, some people just like want you to take it and they will get out of it. Um, and they have other things on their plate and they cannot spend so much time unless they know something is coming out of it. And you can't really guarantee. It could, something also could come out of it, but they can't guarantee. So we are adding a layer of personal interviews next round um, to kind of 
to hear from some of those ideas submitted, what are their plans? If they are a winner, what are their plans to move that technology forward? Um, yeah, we talked about the winners. They don't have the water heating experience in most cases, so the industry, the role that uh, or and L or the technical labs play is crucial. We talked about that. <coughs> talked about that. So the fast forward. Um, we will. Uh, so in terms of fast forward, we will do a smaller number of campaigns because last year we were running, running, running to try and get a wide variety, and we don't think that that's how we want to do it uh, next year. We'll do smaller number, focused, aligned, and we want to make sure that these are in, in line with. Um, BTO multi-year plan, and it's in line as well with the big themes that are happening in the industry. Um, we want to rely on partnerships with key industry players. Like a lot of our calls was around um, heating, refrigeration, and air conditioning. So we are doing a partnership with Ashley, which is a big organization there, and they are helping us kind of identify the industry partners, promote and promote and promote. So we want to leverage their uh, huge network. Um, we talked about the personal interviews and in terms of. I think this is the part we are, where we are still struggling about because it started as a crowdsourcing and crowdsourcing you come up with an idea and you think that's the end but really we want to move this idea forward but there's not a book on how do we move that idea to the market and sometimes it takes years and years but you want to see results so that you can actually prove that this program is working. So uh, there's the idea, can you move it to the market and every platform is different. So I think that's if there is a part where we're still kind of working on perfecting is how do we move that idea to the market? And what is the realistic timeline for us to be able to show success and progress so that we can continue this program? Um, but it's been a fun journey jumping so far. So thank you for listening to us. <laughs> so if you guys have questions, Sven is the man. <laughs> Yeah, so what we have done it so far, um, we have done it in parallel to some kind of event happening. So for example, we had three specific calls around sensors in May, so there is this conf big conference called Sensor Expo. So we went there and did it. Um, but there was another, in Chicago, there was a university event, so the target there has been students. And I think it was a common theme in the morning where a couple of people said, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I wasn't really sure. We weren't really sure what to expect, mm -hmm. right? Because we weren't really sure who's that target audience. Um, in some cases, it's been students. In some cases, it's been small businesses. Um, but it's usually individuals uh, not representing any big corporates. Mm -hmm. How do you gauge your jump up bonds, whether it's going to be a mini or personalized? or? Yeah, we have to plan it before, ahead of time. So you plan it, and then, um, and usually you plan based on feedback. So for example, the mini, we have, we're hoping for like around the Ashley Annual uh, um, Conference in Las Vegas in January, we would do one mini and one on the go. Mm. Um, it's, a it's a lot of trial and error, yeah. right? So it's guessing who's gonna be there and how they react. Yeah, and getting feedback from people that have been attending that conference. So with Ashley, we went in thinking that we would do just a normal jump a three-hour event. But over and over, people kept telling us, you will not have someone sitting there for three hours. <laughs> and you have to, if you don't listen, then something is wrong here. Um, so you listen, and then the mini jump a it's we have students in the room uh, from 8 to 2 that day, and we can have a 45-minute that day. So you capitalize on the opportunity, and you run with the mini jump a um, So we try different things, and we try to track it closely to um, what are we seeing on the website so that we can see where are we successful versus not. Yeah, I, I would just add that uh, for, like if, if, if you tag along with the uh, conference, you don't want to compete with the actual conference proceedings. So uh, that's, that's another uh, reason for, for the uh, mini. Exactly. Yeah. Can, can you describe the federal procurement process? Contracting officers <laughs> uh, related to prize money. So to be honest, washing the prize money, and then the federal government incentivizing in this particular area. Yeah, that's that's a uh, good question, and um, so that that is particularly relevant for the uh, FEMP uh, call that we did, um, where uh, uh, Tim Unruh, the uh, the head of uh, FEMP, um, after announcing the uh, winner and sort of uh, looking at the next. Uh, steps in, in terms of uh, valid, validating the um, the uh, having uh, Oak Ridge uh, validate the uh, technology. Um, 
it, it, he, he raised exactly that point. Like, so assume you're successful, like, uh, how, how do you then go through the uh, federal uh, procurement channels? And uh, so Oak Ridge is going to um, uh, facilitate, like, putting together a, uh, uh, um, a, a guide uh, for that particular technology in terms of how it would reach uh, procurement uh, um, and, and, and to go through that pathway, uh, which can then be used as a model for other technologies. Uh, so, so that's to be, to be <laughs> determined, yeah. It's, it's a big challenge. Yeah. Just to add briefly to it, so I talk about some cash awards, like the carrots that we put for the winners, and because okay, the national labs do not have private authority, we are not entitled to give these cash awards. But the industry partner is, right? So really, the industry partner is sponsoring the cash awards. The industry partner has to do some tax forms, and GE will send Joe Gaddis a, ca a check with three to five thousand dollars, and we stay out of it for that part. Michael, uh, on the impact um, measure, I know that can be strenuous, you know, because you know you see the results working with these innovators every day, but sometimes it's tough to tell program management. So, have you considered looking at comparable um, grant programs, i.e., a small business innovation research program, and looking at that as a baseline to compare the performance of some of these innovating? And the point is, like sometimes, and Sven may have a different opinion on that, you need time to move these ideas to the market. It doesn't happen overnight, it's not a year, it's usually a few years, five or so. Um, so we just, will you give us funding for five more years till we wait and see how this, how did Benjamin's do in the market? <laughs> you need a lot of faith. We have that, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With uh, hardware technologies, it, it it just takes takes so long, uh, uh, and, and we're looking for ways to accelerate that. Um, I mean, that's that's one reason why we're partnering with uh, larger like, industry partners to 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 have them pull pull the products or the uh, solutions uh, in and to, uh, see if they can be commercialized uh, faster. Um, but I think it's 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 just we're one year in, so it's it's hard to to say like how successful uh, it is compared to like an SBIR. Yeah, I just I asked that because I, I remember being a technical advisor on some of the SBIR awards and seeing some of the stuff that came out from mm -hmm. the technology panelists, and uh, we started to look at that because we had uh, you know you just see that some folks perpetually stay on SBIR funding. Give us one more year. <laughs> <laughs> Next year. Cool. Anyone else? Great. Jessica. So what you were talking about, the resistance to the open innovation, which obviously is something that a lot of our customers see, uh, but then you've proved that there might be some value. Um, so what do you, do you think that there's a changing job description for those internal technologists and researchers now that the boundaries are becoming more permeable? Are they are they still researchers, or are they stewards of, like, discovery? Yeah. Sven, do you want to take that? <laughs> 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 you have more seniority. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. Um, that's a very good question. I'll email you the answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have an answer now, so I'll email you the answer. 